American History TV is at the annual meeting of the Organization of American Historians meeting in Milwaukee. Linda Gordon, professor of history at New York University, joins us to talk a little bit about the, the history of birth control politics. You wrote the book, uh, Moral Property, the History of Birth Control Politics, a 2003 publication. For our viewers, where, where, do birth control, where does the debate over birth control begin in American history? It actually began only about 175 years ago because for all of human society, in every known society, people have always practiced some kind of birth control, and it was not ever controversial before that. Uh, but for the last 175 years, in sort of peaks and valleys, there have been concerns about it. Uh, but from the point of view in a story, and this is only a modern controversy, because by and large, you know, the main motive behind people's use of birth control has always been economic. It's always about how many kids can you afford to have, bring up in the right way, how close together can you allow them to come. And so it's such an important thing that people have always tried to control it. Of course, they didn't have such great methods uh, in the old days. Take us back 175, that's pretty specific. Where does that start? It starts with the women's rights movement what some people call the women's suffrage movement, even though there were a lot of different women's rights that people were fighting about. And really the first campaign against birth control was a backlash, a reaction to this women's rights movement from conservatives who were afraid that women were leaving the home, that they were agitating for higher education, they were agitating for access to employment, access to uh, public uh, politics, to being able to vote, to being able to serve on juries. And they argued at that time that birth control was going to take women away from their God-given destiny, which was to stay home and raise children and be wives. Um, and that movement succeeded. And uh, first, most of the states, but then in 1873, the federal government passed a law that declared anything to do with birth control obscene and therefore not allowable in the interstate mail. So any sort of product couldn't be sold or yes. mailed. But it was not only a product. You could not even legally uh, write a, an, a, you know, a, an article arguing for birth control. That was considered obscene. And that lasted for quite a while. It lasted well into the 20th century, and it was in the early 20th century, around 1910, that there really arose a movement to get rid of that, um, that prohibition. I think the reason then was there were many more women in the labor force. It was becoming more important to have fewer children because children were supposed to stay in school. They weren't supposed to go out and work to help support the family. Between 1910 and 1920, there was uh, a birth, what they called birth control leagues, organizations advocating birth control in every uh, large city or town in this country. And state by state, uh, states began getting rid of their prohibition on birth control until finally the Supreme Court ruled um, in 1965, actually, not until then, that it was unconstitutional to have any ban on but birth control. This period between 1910 and 1920, was this also parallel to the women getting the vote movement? Yes, very much. 